All right. We're going to um, begin with the program then so the primary class can uh, get prepared wherever you're at downstairs. And we're going to have a prayer here and, and then they will start and then we'll just follow right through. When it comes to the testimonies, why, um, we'll, we will try and get the microphones to those giving them. So let's just, uh, again, commit this time to the Lord. Father, just as the different ones share here today, Lord, we just pray for a flow of your spirit. And uh, may the joy of the Lord just well up in this place in our hearts, O oh God, that indeed this would become, would be a house of praise today. Um, so we just pray an anointing over every song, over every word that's spoken, Lord, that uh, you would receive glory and not man. Father, we understand, Lord, that <clears throat> you do not give your glory <clears throat> to another. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll hand it over to the uh, primary class. Jesus had died on the cross a few days earlier, <clears throat> and after he died, he was buried in a tomb. His fan friends and families were very sad. His family and friends missed him very much. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene and some other women went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. This astonished them, but there was something even more astonishing. The body of Jesus was not in the tomb. Mary came running to tell the disciples. She spoke with two of them named Simon, Peter, and John. They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put them. Simon, Peter, and John started for the tomb. Both were running, but John outran Simon, Peter, and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon, Peter, came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in his place, separate from the linen. Finally, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed, but they still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They spoke to her. At this, Mary turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize yet that it was Jesus. She thought perhaps the man she saw was a gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Mary. But Bill and I, Jesus! Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord! Yes! And she told them all the things that he had said to her. Yes! Yes! yes. Now Jesus' friends don't have to be sad anymore. They know Jesus is alive forever.
Okay, so the first song we're going to sing here is called It Is Not Death to Die. Um, it's just something that I've been learning that, I've been finding that this year in a more real way that taking up my cross and dying daily is life. You know, this song isn't just about physical death, but it um, speaks to our everyday, um, yeah, all, every day. It is not death to die, to leave this weary road, and join the saints who dwell on high, who found their home with God. It is not death to close the eyes long dimmed by tears, and wake in joy before your next song we're going to sing this next song is our God is victorious and we've I think all really enjoyed practicing for this song um, it, it's a special song in that it really brings out the fact that no matter what happens no matter what we're seeing in front of our eyes God always wins and resurrection is in many ways is that that ultimate um, celebration of God winning on earth and the resurrection is the promise that not only in, not only Jesus rose from the dead, but he as the firstborn from the dead, as it says in Colossians, his resurrection then means that all of us have the hope of resurrection. And not only us, but all of creation is going to be restored. And we're looking forward to God winning, not just in Jesus' life, not just in our own resurrection, but in the entire world as the entire world is restored. So let's think about that. We're going to be singing this song, Our God is Victorious. Every power on earth and in heaven is a shadow in his light. No authority, law, or government Challenge as the sovereign might. His reign and rule have no boundary. All that is his hands have wrought. Nothing. 
nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. We are well aware we were orphans once, bent and broken in our shame. Then he sought us out and adopted us. Now we bear his royal name. Every sin or crime we have ever done is no match for Jesus' blood. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. We are rescued out of darkest night, free from Satan's evil hold. And the kingdom of our Savior's light is our soul's eternal home. Though the enemy tries to steal and kill, what the death of Christ has bought. Nothing ever can, nothing ever will overcome the Lord our God. Our God is victorious. He
disciples that Jesus Christ is no longer dead. Joy to the world, he is risen, hallelujah, he's risen. without dying but not all dying is death five years ago I walked across the stage graduating magna cum laude with great honor covered with medals and ribbons for academic honors I was determined I was intelligent, and I was hard. I was lonely, and I was very independent. I hadn't cried in at least a decade. But I walked across that stage with great honor. One year later, I was sitting in the parking lot of a mental hospital having refused to check myself in. And they said it wasn't quite bad enough that they could forcibly check me in. And that was the beginning of the dying. Over the next two years, I lost church, I lost community, I lost family. I lost all my self-confidence. I lost the ability to use the very intelligence that had won me those honors. And in that death, resurrection began. There was the miracle of tears. I began to learn to trust God and to trust people which was just as much of a miracle. I began to walk by faith and not by intelligence. And the hardness began to be replaced with gentleness. And today, I have more friends than I ever dreamed would be possible. The love that I have experienced from God and from his people has restored me to more wholeness than I ever had before. I'm living now on the Sunday side 
of the second day. And I am alive because Jesus has overcome death. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, 1 Peter 1, 3. I would just like to share some of what God has been doing in my life over the last several months. Several months ago, I asked God to do whatever it takes to bring me to a place of repentance and full surrender to him. He heard my cry and had mercy on me. He allowed me to get sick, and through the sickness, he brought me closer to him. Though it was and is hard, he has shown mercy in allowing illness. One thing I now realize is how I need to lean fully on him. I can do nothing on my own strength. I have a deeper and fuller relationship with him now and desire his will and leading in my life. God has answered so many prayers in the last few months, and he is showing me more and more to trust him. There have been so many times in the past months, both in big and small ways, that when I prayed and chose to trust his will and not lean on my own understanding, sooner or later he answered. So often it doesn't look like I pictured, but he answers and he meets our needs. I believe God has plans for me and my family and is using these harder times to lead me towards my full potential. It's been tough, but I know he has my best in mind. I also would just like to take this time to thank the church family here for all your prayers, gifts, and meals that you gave. We really appreciate it. God bless. Ready? Do you um, want to hold the microphone? Or do you want I to need someone to hold it for me so yeah, I can I'll read this. for you. Okay. Do you want to go up front? I guess I can. Okay. Yeah, you can stay here. I'll hold it for you. How should I face this way? Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it's wonderful. Our wonderful Jesus is alive, and it's so good to serve him and love him and worship him. I'm telling you, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful life. Jesus is so wonderful. Oh, he's altogether lovely. He's more than anyone could ever desire. If you could just get to know him and his intimacy, it would change your very life. It certainly has changed my life. And I just want to praise him and thank him today. And song I'd like to sing, one of the songs is called Living for Jesus. And that's what I live for, Jesus. Jesus alone. <clears throat> Living for Jesus, a life that is true. Longing to please him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, <clears throat> glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for me. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thine atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master, my heart shall be thy throne, my life I give, henceforth to live, O Christ for thee alone. <clears throat> Living for Jesus, who died in my place, bearing on Calvary my sin and disgrace. Such love constrains me to answer your call. Follow your leading and give you my all. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee. For thou in thine atonement 
didst give thyself for me. I own no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live. O Christ, for thee alone. Living for <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> Through earth's little while, my dearest treasure, the light of his smile. Seeking the lost ones, he died to redeem. Bringing the weary to find rest in him. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thine atonement didst give Thyself for me. I owe no other master. My heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live. O oh, Christ, for thee alone. Next song I want to sing is called, It is Truly Wonderful. And I'd like everyone to stand. And I would like, <laughs> when I get to the chorus, I'd like to, everyone to clap their hands along with me. Okay. <clears throat> he... You pardon my transgressions, you sanctified my soul, you honor my confession, and by your blood I'm whole. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. <clears throat> You keep me every moment by trusting in your word, grace, till through your blessed atonement I that I may see your face. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. <clears throat> Glory to your name. You keep me through affliction. You leave me not alone. You're with me in temptation. You keep me for your own. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. <coughs> Glory to your name. You prosper and protect me. Your blessings ever flow. You fill me with your glory. You make me white as snow. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to your name. There's not a single blessing which we receive on earth <coughs> that does not come from heaven, the source of our new birth. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to your name. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Carol. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. All right. Next group. Come on up. Whoever that is. Darkness. 
darkness tries to hide, he trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and oh see how great, how great is our God. From age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. I heard numerous people ask the question, so what does the resurrection mean to you? And as I was looking at the words of this first song, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, Jesus went to, you know, hell and during the, between the period of his, his death and, and the resurrection and took the keys of death and the hell from, from the enemy and ultimately defeated the worst enemies that we had and now we have nothing to fear and this this first side is first song is hide me in the cleft of the of the rock and because we're on the winning side we have that cleft if we were on the losing side there would be nowhere to hide but because jesus is victorious we have that cleft that we can run to and um, hide in no matter what happens in our lives and we found this to be true in our family this last year tower of strength, 
your faithfulness a shelter for me. Lord, surround me with your love. You are my refuge, a present help in my trouble, a river of gladness, my help as the morning comes. You are my refuge, though the world falls around me. No, I will not fear, Lord, for I have your love. No, I will not fear, Lord, for I have your love. We'll just begin with um, saying that I've really experienced the resurrection power in my life in many ways. And I'm going to share two incidents especially. Um, one was four years ago, and a lot of you probably heard that in my testimony that I had shared here at church. Um, but I'll share that one again. And um, one song that was, that's really, that I often think of is the song, um, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Um, some of the lines in that is taking away my burden, setting my spirit free, 
Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty. And then in the chorus, there's a part that says, broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. And this one is especially about shame. Um, when I brought all the shame to the cross four years ago that I had, um, I didn't realize it was in my life until, yeah, it was revealed. Um, yeah, it was especially connected with uh, immorality and an incident with my uncle. And uh, when I brought all that shame to the cross, um, I didn't really expect a huge change. But with, like that same day, I started realizing that I don't have shame to pray in front of other people anymore. And my shame of speaking in front of a group of people is gone. And that I actually do anticipate sharing testimony. Just like all of a sudden it just became real to me that this shame is actually gone. It was hindering those spots in my, those areas in my life. And then I saw the resurrection power also in my daughter's life when she just um, was completely changed um, to it had been on a weekend, and then Monday she went back to school. It was on a weekend when I dealt with my things, and then Monday she went back to school. And Monday evening she received a note from her teacher blessing her for speaking loudly at school and for, um, for praying loudly at school. And at first I didn't connect it at all. Um, not until that Thursday, the teacher came up to me and she said, I don't know what happened to your daughter, but Monday morning she woke up. And um, then all of a sudden it clicked like, oh, that was why she didn't speak loudly at school. I knew it had been an issue, but it wasn't like we were making a big issue out of it. But I knew the teacher had talked to us about it before. And, and, um, yeah, it was just amazing to see, like, the teacher noticed that total transformed um, area in her life right away. Like, <laughs> anyway, and so it just, um, yeah, I just smiled to her and I said, oh, um, I guess we as parents were dealing with some things in our lives and I guess it had affected our children. And... Um, so I'm just really, really grateful that we're living in the New Testament time when our iniquities don't have to be passed on to the next generation. Amen. And we can actually now, um, the cross can break the cycle, but we do need to take full responsibility and bring it to the cross, or it isn't broken. And um, another thing that happened recently, um, in the last couple months, I ex where I experienced God's resurrection power was um, God gave me a dream one night, and the next morning I realized right away that this dream was given for a reason. And um, God clearly showed me in that dream that I have a fear of this certain spirit. And I try to avoid people with that spirit. I try to protect myself. And um, I just, I was afraid of getting attacked. And um, I also, yeah, I just clearly saw that I was trying to protect myself in the dream. Um, and I had even made a comment the evening before to my husband that um, really <laughs> indicated that fear of that spirit. And, it, and I didn't connect it right away until my husband said, do you remember what you said last night to me? And right away I was like, I have the same feeling in the dream. I had this, yeah, the same feeling as I did last night. So the next morning after my dream, um, after I shared my dream with my husband, we just prayed together and I repented and brought my fear and me trying to protect myself. Um, to the cross and I asked the Holy Spirit to protect me and I repented of trying to protect me in my own strength. 
God's uh, resurrection power was very real to me. And I can now feel the Holy Spirit's protection and my fear is totally gone. And so I just praise God for the life that he has put inside of me and that he really does change me when I repent and bring it to the cross. Thirty-four years ago, around 34, 35, I'm not exactly sure, it was a Sunday morning. I got up, just a normal Sunday morning. I went out to the living room, turned the TV on. I was going to watch my favorite uh, evangelist. And I sat down. He started preaching. It was like four o'clock at four o'clock in the morning. It was a pre-recorded, but I wanted to watch. I was really seeking God at that time. I mean, I was seeking God with all of my heart. We had been married eleven years. Our marriage was an absolute wreck. I said. That, The only way it'll heal is it's got to get worse before it can get better. That's how bad things were. I cried out to the Lord. And, and what, what the evangelist was sharing just absolutely broke my heart. That day, I died. I saw a holy, holy, holy God. And I saw myself so wretched that at one point that day I asked God to just send me straight to hell because that's where I belong. But the Holy Spirit said, you don't have to go there. I died for you. I died for you. Will you believe me? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And then also Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection. He also said that to me. I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And I said, yes, I do. I do believe. I don't know what all took place the rest of that day. And that night, and the whole next day, I went to work. I had joined a little church, a little church of Christ. And if you know anything about them, the first thing they want to do is baptize you. I was ready. It was okay. So Monday night, I called my pastor about 11 o'clock at night. The whole church came out to the lake. I shared my testimony. I shared what I was going through. I got baptized in the water, went in the lake. When I came up, I was, figuratively speaking, I was three feet off the ground for three days. For real. Not long after that, my wife called the police had me removed from the house. It's good. I deserved it. I was unfaithful. I was a very wicked, very vile, very inconsiderate of anybody except myself. So I took it. The Lord showed me. I started reading the Bible. I started reading. The Word of God never made sense to me until I got born again. 
And I begin to love my wife probably for the first time ever. And I love her today. I would do anything for her. Anything that pertains to life and godliness. I've been praying and fasting and weeping and sobbing for her for the last 35 years. But God is doing a wonderful work. He's taught me some things that I probably never would have learned. The sanctity of marriage. It's serious. It's very serious. He's teaching me many things. And he has blessed me above and beyond that which I could even think or ask. We had two little children at that time. And I, I just, I said, God, you give me... You, do whatever it takes. I said, if you don't teach me how to live, I'm going to die. So the Lord taught me. In his word. His word. That's what it is. It's not, real, it's not complicated. Read the word. Study the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it every day. I love the Lord. I love to share the Word of God. I love to share with people. I wish everybody in the world could be saved. I wish everybody in the world could experience what we're experiencing this morning. This is beautiful. But there are people out there that are so hurting, they don't even know where to turn. I want to tell everybody. I have a few verses I'd like to share. Difficulties. Don't run from them. Embrace them. Psalm 119.67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Psalm 119.71, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Amen. Psalm 119.75 says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. And that in thy faithfulness has afflicted me. So if God is afflicting me, we better, I want, I want to learn from it. I want to learn. Psalm 119, 92. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in mine affliction. It's been a blessing to serve with you people in this little congregation. The Lord has led me. He has blessed me above and beyond that which I could even think or ask. And he is continuing to do so. I am so grateful for the resurrection that day when I said, I am done. I am finished, Lord. Unless you show me how to live, I'm going to die. I would like to encourage all of you with one verse. Luke 12, 37. Blessed are those servants whom when the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down at, to meet and will come forth and serve them. Glory, that is shouting material people. Let's get excited.
Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves
a group of women studying together and every every month we meet together to study Jesus what he said how to live and we are delighted to join in this celebration of what happened and how it is amazing for us to think of like forever you know how it affects us forever but also how it affects us today I hope that really comes through with these songs just the hope that is ours. Thank you. Mary came unto the tomb of 
I just want to celebrate Jesus' resurrection power in my life um, in so many different ways and areas where I've seen that power. Um, I could talk a lot about that, but I think today I just want to talk about um, the life, mostly, um, the power in that. Um, the last few months, say, yeah, probably last fall, sometime the Lord really started convicting me about um, how much I had let anxiety rule my life, take over in my life. Um, I guess in our life overseas, there have just been a lot of opportunities for anxiety, and I didn't realize how much I let that in. And, um, yeah, how much fear had bound me up. Um, so the Lord, I can say, delivered me from fear um, in a powerful way. And things that used to cause a lot of anxiety, now I can't fear. I cannot. And that is God. That is just his power. Um, another area just recently, um, about three weeks ago actually, I was just praying for a touch from God. Just felt like I needed his touch in a deeper way. Um, I went to my room one night and he met me there. He just took my life before my eyes. He, scene after scene from the time I was small until recently, just a lot of hard things, a lot of painful times, um, and I began to see how much of my life was defined by loneliness. Um, a lot of loneliness came out there. Um, so I cried for three hours as he took that pain. It just felt like a deep releasing of a lot of emotional pain, and he took that. Um, in such a beautiful way. Along with that, um, he caused a physical healing. I had had gut issues for as long as I can remember and chronic gallbladder pain. That has been totally gone. Um, 
so I just want to give him glory today for his power in um, my spiritual life and my emotions and my body. Um, he is definitely a healer in every way. Um, just this week, more recently, he's yeah, just revealing more and more stuff. Um, I realized how much I'm still thinking about the future and um, there's a lot of changes coming up, change in our life, change in our work, in our ministry, and just feels like everything is going to be new and just a lot of unknowns. So I think I was just kind of living out there somewhere. Um, he woke me up early one morning and just revealed something. Not really anything new, but it was just what I needed um, this week. He just said, there's a reason my name is I Am. He's a God of now. Um, when I dwell on past hurts, or when I dwell in the future, worrying about the future, he's not there. He's in the now. And I just realized how much I've been missing him. And so, yeah, I'm coming back to now, coming back to today, and I want to really take every day, every moment, and embrace it, everything that comes with him, and give him a place to work, and celebrate his presence and power every moment of my life. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. What have I to say after everything we've experienced this morning? This has been beautiful. I think of the scriptures, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to go back like Brother Omer did about 28 years ago when coming here newly, so to speak, confident, cocky, arrogant, selfish, and through the ministry here, I came to the place to realize I'm a wicked sinner and was born again and God set me on a path and in that separated from family due to my own anger and evil knowing it's rightly so I sat there and said Luke how did you get here and God took me to Romans 1 that step down knowing God is God but wouldn't acknowledge him the pride the confidence self-confidence and if you followed it step by step until it's an accelerated slide into hell and that's where I was as one brother said you don't realize you're hanging over hell by a thread and God is holding it and you're fighting God and as my eyes were opened I trembled for how does, does a person change something that's such a selfishness and I began to pray and I think I prayed for close to five years God create in me a thankful heart take this selfishness away <clears throat> and one day I realized my heart is just overflowing with gratitude and praise and I praise him for he had done that which I cried out for and how has the resurrection power affected me in that in changing me from a person that had only taking only it's all about me to one that cares about others I thank God for all he has done this past week there was a scripture just tantalizing me every moment that my mind was free it was a beautiful thing oh death where is your sting 
O oh, grave, where is your victory? And I followed that through when I had, as I had time. And it's Paul speaking that. And he goes back to Isaiah, where it seems Isaiah had a glimpse, if I can say it, into the book of Revelations. He was trying to describe things. And it says, death is swallowed up in victory. And Paul was going on this, and it seems he's taunting death and saying, oh, death, where is now your sting? Or if you follow it through in the German, it's almost like your stinger. You've lost your stinger. It's like taunting a bullet, saying you've lost your power. And we today find ourselves able to walk. There's one more thing I need to say there. He goes on. The sting of death is sin. When we let Christ deal with the sin, the sting of death, that awful fear of death, is gone. And the strength of sin is the law. As long as I tried to do, I was a doing person, doing everything just right. It's the law that's death. We don't do well in that. Today, I seek to walk with God. I'm just going to fast forward a f quite a few years where working alone, being taunted and told, while well, you sit by yourself there, and being troubled by that, having longed to reach out, to be involved in the lives of others, to spread God's good news when there was a truck driver that made a regular delivery, a tall run, a tall man, I had to look right up at him. He would come with a delivery every week into the area, and it was clear why they had on that thing. He was an engine, so to speak. He would come back up to the dock, jump out. He was an old man. Unstrap his, his load, get your stuff off, strap back up, hand you the paper, get you to sign it, and in his truck and gone. He had many, many stops to make in a day. And there was no opportunity to speak to him. And one day he didn't see something and backed over of our things. And he felt horrible about it. And uh, he just couldn't quite get over it. And I told him, Ron, it's okay, just forget it. We forgive you. And I finally reached way up and put my hand on his shoulder and said, Ron, it's okay. He looked right down in my eyes. It was kind of a, I don't know what to say. And then he was gone. I had prayed for him for I don't know how long. Several weeks later, he came again, unstrapped, unloaded, signed the paper. I was ready to go on for him to move on. I was already moving for the shop. Whenever he stood standing there, he was looking down at me. He said, I'd been reading my Bible. And that began a relationship where he was searching and began looking forward to the times when he comes where we can share. What are you reading? What here? Read here. What do you think of this? This is part of the life of Christ that we live. How the power of God gives us power. We experienced recently a truck driver coming into our shop that he spoke Dutch. He was a Puerto Rican and he spoke Dutch and he shocked me and he saw it. And we began this relationship of he goes around to the Amish and Mennonite shops and he's learning Dutch and there was a real hunger there and I couldn't quite place it. And so I began to look forward to these times and I... Uh, one time when he was there, he had this question that he had before. Now, the Amish or the Mennonites, how do they believe different and which is the real way? And God had me do something that shocked me. I just, instead of answering his question, I told him, fast moving, the story of the woman at the well. And while telling it, I wondered, why am I doing this? He didn't ask for this. And as I spoke to him about what Jesus said, your God is a spirit. He seeks 
us to worship him in that way. His next question was, do you live down here? And I thought, you didn't hear what I, you weren't listening. Then I realized what he's asking is, I'm on the clock, I got to move on. Where do you live so we can come and talk? I want to talk some more. That's all part of the resurrection power. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's, he's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around, loving care and though my heart grows weary I never will despair I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts the day of his appearing will come at last he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christ. Your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He Living by faith. 
safely will carry me through no matter what evils be tied why should i then care though the tempest may blow if jesus walks close by my side living by faith yes living by faith in jesus above in jesus above trusting confide trusting some sweet day our troubles will then all be o'er the master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore living by faith yes living by faith in jesus above in jesus above trusting confide trusting confiding Upon my blessed Lord 
to him confide. No more the shadows come between, I'm walking by his side. In true faith will I on him rely, he makes my burdens light. And on we walk together, and he leads my steps aright. On and on we walk together. When we 
we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all that heavenly hosts we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be, praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on the happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When we meet our blessed Savior in the Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to these verses. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness of firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. God bless you all very, very much. Trust your hearts have been encouraged today. I, um, we didn't have the opportunity to get together like this last year. And we don't know if we'll have the opportunity again. But if we don't, we will meet around the table at the Last Supper of the Lamb. At that great wedding feast. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I just ask you, God, that you would bless every person here, Lord. Thank you for blessing us today, God. And Thank you for encouraging our hearts. And we do look forward. We set our eyes upon the sky, looking for your return, as it were, O oh God. Lord Jesus, even so come. Even so come. Amen. Amen.